53 clubs out of 92, that's where we stand, and Ipswich are now in the Premier League once again. It's going to be an uphill battle though, as we're predicted 19th in the season preview, and we'll be looking for a new job at the end of the season, no matter how it goes. We've spent 100 million over the summer, but the squad is pretty much the same as last season, with the vast majority of that money being spent making our loanees permanent. But our first out was Chris Wood to Saudi Arabia, and he never really made an impact in his single season with the club, so it made sense to cash in whilst we still could. And speaking of cashing in, Van der Street was also out. He played well, but for 4 million, the 33-year-old was too good to turn down. Donnelly was made permanent for 20 million, as was Iwu for 27.5 from Bournemouth. Andy Moran smashed our transfer record with his £50 million move from Brighton, whilst Burns was a steal for £4 million from Manchester City. The loans, however, did continue with Marin Petkov joining from Championship side Leeds for depth on the wings. Liverpool youngster Tyler Morton, formerly of Blackburn, came in as our second domestic loan as well. With Matthias Martins coming in on loan from Udinese, with the Brazilian having bags of English experience having spent several seasons with Watford. We did make two final free transfer moves, bringing in Brooke Norton Cuffey in as backup for the right backs, and James McAtee coming in from Man City on a free, getting straight into contention for a starting place in the attacking line. However, just days before the season started, Brentford came calling with a job interview, but before we could find out anything, we were visiting the Etihad to open the Premier League campaign. Haaland scored early and Manchester City just wouldn't stop scoring. We did get a consolation from Donnelly, but it was a 5-1 defeat. I think it would be quite interesting to take that Brentford job, given the performance we've just seen. But after nearly three weeks, Brentford finally came back with a decision and rejected me, opting for Arne's slot instead. The reason they gave my lofty league expectation of top half finish was too much for their board. Never mind. We did smash Middlesbrough 5-0 in the meantime and then looked like a completely different side as we travelled to Bournemouth despite going 1-0 down early on. We bounced back immediately with Donnelly and then never looked back, eventually cruising to a 5-1 victory at the Vitality. That's 11 goals in three games and one of those was a 5-1 defeat. Uh, Fulham were up next and we had an all-elite performance in the first half. <laughs> Donnelly got a brace and then in the second half they battled back and it was 3-3 before we entered stoppage time but a well worked free kick left Angerine in bags of space and we grabbed the winner send for the Khan what did you just say? I said, I said hi Tony you look great oh, that's good good it was great I'm excited thanks guys thanks for everything yeah, you're doing absolutely. it's going great yeah let's do it thanks yeah. thank, thank you oh yeah thanks, guys. appreciate it see you, appreciate it. See you around yeah. see you. Despite the opening day, we ended August strong and somehow managed to sit third in the league, just a single point behind Manchester City. Now, a confident performance against the other side of Manchester brought us up to 56, thanks to these goals from Donnelly and Martins. And then a similarly strong performance away at Spurs followed, but we got two late goals from Martins once again and Morton, and that was enough to score another victory, and our fairy tale start to the season had continued. The game against Newcastle then was much tougher, with Isaac putting them ahead early on, but then we were not going to go down easily. Goals from Donnelly and McAtee put us ahead at the break, and we extended the lead thanks to McAtee's second. Newcastle pulled one back, but late on a goal from Andurin on the counter gave us a well-deserved 4-2 victory. And look at that bloody league table. Ipswich are top of the league after eight games. What on earth could go wrong? Disaster! Jamie Donnelly is out for six months with damaged cruciate ligaments and this could signal the end of our season as his seven goals from nine starts is going to be really tough to replace. But it didn't stop us really immediately as we went to Brentford and made them regret their decision earlier on in the season as Selena scored the only goal of the game and we took another victory. October did see two defeats though as Crystal Palace and Sheffield United both won at Portman Road and we ended the month in a four-way tie for the lead with Manchester City, Liverpool, Ipswich and Arsenal all tied on 22 points, only separated by goal difference. There were 33 teams left now to complete the challenge and this screen is looking surprisingly full already. A goal fest against Brighton kicked off November 
And after being back and forth and back and forth, we eventually came out with a 5-2 victory with Moran getting on the scoreboard against his former club and that put us up to another team off the list. Defeat to Liverpool followed, but another back and forth goal fest came next in the East Anglian derby. We raced to a 3-0 lead, but Norwich managed to somehow fight back and kept fighting. But we eventually left as 4-3 winners. Uh, December did see a couple of job interviews at both Tottenham and then Crystal Palace. But eventually neither club came with an offer. For various reasons, they went with other managers, which is good for them, but not so good for us as we need a new club by the end of the season. And that uncertainty led to an absolutely terrible December, and it took four more weeks for us to score another victory, and we didn't get a single point in that time either. Uh, we hosted Leicester just after Christmas, and the 3-2 victory was much needed on all fronts. Now, after we were snubbed by Crystal Palace for their manager role, we faced them on New Year's Day and slapped them around to win 2-1 and tick them off the list as well. 30 to go. The four straight defeats in December had made a massive dent in our league position and we were still just about hanging on to a hunt for the European places as we sat 7th before Bournemouth came knocking with a job interview. Now, Bournemouth, if you look at the league table, are down in 17th and really struggling. But I'm desperate for a new job at the, at the end of the season. I cannot stay at Ipswich and there's a lot of Premier League clubs left to go so we, we really need to stay in the Premier League. Uh, I move forward and agree to take over the club at the end of the season. Now, the Spurs job would have been much better and so would the Palace job obviously but we can still build something with the Cherries next season we've got two years to do it in and plenty of Premier League clubs to beat in that time now January was decent really but all of the league wins were repeat victories from earlier in the season and thankfully the FA Cup draw gave us Stoke in the fourth round so we could tick them off with a comfortable victory February was another nightmare and this season was quickly running away from us. The decision to join Bournemouth looks to have affected the dressing room morale and we'd slumped to ninth. But the FA Cup was still just about on the table. Now, a rare turn in form against Liverpool was very timely. We grabbed the win thanks to goals from Martins and McAtee and we clung on to just about hold on to a 2 von victory. Now, the FA Cup run continued, giving us championship side Wolves in the semi-final. Now, this was a bit of a dream as we hadn't beat them yet and we needed basically another victory to get to the final of the FA Cup and it would be my 200th game in my career. Now, Wembley saw an absolute cracker as we first came from behind but then allowed Wolves to do the same to come back to 2-2 before we managed to bundle home a winner in the 87th minute. Now, not only was this another scalp taken from the list, but it gave us Chelsea in the final and they were also still remaining unticked off on our Beat the 92 challenge. Now, the rest of the run-in was pretty much just enough to keep us in the top half, but defeat to Manchester United in a terrible way on the penultimate day meant that there would be no European qualification via the league. Uh, final day gave us West Ham and it was actually quite nice to see that Bournemouth was secure as well. So that didn't give us one last thing to stress about on the final day. Uh, and that final game was an absolute rout as McAtee opened the scoring in the first half. And then the second half saw Lowe and Hayden score great efforts from range before Morton made it four to close the Premier League season in style. But we had just one more game left with Ipswich and we were heading back to Wembley for the FA Cup final. Now, I've had several chances against Chelsea recently. I think we played in the Cup last year, but we failed spectacularly in most of them. And they, this this was no real difference. Uh, our tight defence kept us level all the way to the end of normal time, which wouldn't have been good enough anyway. Uh, and then Lukaku put us down in extra time with two goals, and we couldn't close out the Ipswich stint with a trophy. 25 teams to go, six seasons left to do it, and of those teams, there are nine left in the Premier League, one in the National League, which is going to be really fun, and then five in each of the EFL leagues. Now, though, it's time to head off to the South Coast and join Bournemouth for the next chapter. <laughs>